Now, we'll try this big one again on a stand. On this stand there is a spring, on top of the spring you have a bearing which is free to rotate that way or a linear bearing to make it go up and down and we are going to couple this wheel into a pivot. And once again spin it up with the drill, sorry. Right, no. Now this looks as if it's going to overbalance for sure. Okay. Right? Ready? If you're careful before the noise starts, as it rises, if I push it round, you should be able to see the spring lift. Okay. Okay. It's going to go very fast with it. No centrifugal force. I can make it rise, and as I do so, that spring says it weighs less. It looks a monstrous device with all that energy that I told you about to have to catch with one hand. It's no problem at all. It has no angular momentum this way. I can lean down also casually and stop it. It is, as I said, as gentle as a lamb. I didn't give it any energy, so why should I expect to receive any from it? Okay, then. Cool that one down. Are these discoveries new? Well, not entirely. I've had letters from all kinds of people who've done similar experiments before and for one reason or another have given up for one, lack of know-how and scientific background two, lack of money and workshop facilities three, lack of courage <laughs> four, lack of anyone to listen especially four now today I've got all of you here ready to listen what a pleasure it is to talk to young people who are ready to listen after you've talked to adults. Quite the most amazing letter I had was from a man who wrote quite unemotionally that he'd performed some of the experiments that I'd done some ten years ago. And he knew that they worked. But he added, I've not told any of my colleagues or friends because even though I occupy quite a senior post in the scientific civil service, I still have a few years to go to retirement and I still cherish hopes of further promotion. <laughs> That is a hell of a thing to say in the scientific world, isn't it? This man dare not tell his colleagues. We talk about blackbirds pecking out the white feathers of their colleagues or killing them if they can't because they didn't conform. This man is afraid of being put away because he wouldn't conform. Now this is not the time or place to go into the mathematics of the gyros. This I can do also. It is not the place to attempt an explanation of the phenomenon but I cannot send you away hungry, you who have come to listen and to learn. I'm going to go back to an electrical experiment. In this theatre someone said, Mr. Faraday, what use is all this? And he was my personal hero. He was the man who showed that Ohm's law was only all right for DC. I'm using this coil again. You put DC through it from a battery and you get 4 amps and 8 volts. That coil has a property all its own which we call resistance, Ohm's law. And with 8 volts and 4 amps you get 2 ohms. Now we'll apply some alternating current to the same coil and we'll get our same 4 amps uh, you got the wrong scale on Benny can you put the scale right we're not cheating you can try this for yourself this is obviously well known the voltage is in fact 32 
So now we have 4 amps and 32 volts, and we have apparently 8 ohms. We call them ohms, but they're not in Ohm's law. Ohm's law can't have two different values at the same time. The interesting thing is that over 140 years later, we don't say that Ohm's law was wrong. We simply say it is restricted to the use of DC. So, however distasteful it is, we now have to say that object has got something more than a mass. It's got a mass, so long as, and a mass only, so long as we want to push it about in straight lines, weigh it, accelerate it, so on. But if we ever choose to spin it, it has another property, all of its own, which corresponds to the inductance of a coil. This is the updating of Newton's laws of motion. But I'm not saying that Newton's laws of motion are wrong. I'm merely pointing out they are restricted to motion in straight lines and to motion where there is no rate of change of acceleration, just as there was no rate of change of current for Ohm's law. So that is at least some food for you to think about and some indication that I have very strong ideas as to how these things work. So I find no difficulty in saying this thing in a black box had a mass, an angular velocity and no angular momentum because we know that in a reactive circuit you have volts, amps and no watts. What is so difficult at that? And if the abominable no men outside this theatre this is one of the letters I received. A man called my critics ab abominable no men. They say no before they've even watched. Uh, this eight pound gyro, we're going to spin it up to a speed that will give about one revolution per second of precession. Have we got the bit of wood, by the way? Ah. Okay. I'll try and remember the note. That is about one revolution per second. I'm going to stick a peg in a hole and it did not break off the peg because it had no momentum. Now I can tell you that at that speed the same effect can be obtained if I tilt the gyro to 45 degrees, pin it, put it to 45 degrees and then let it drop. Okay, watch it from the shadow. Didn't didn't break off the peg. I didn't put it in hard enough. 45 degrees. Could have broken. Did this morning. I think you can see there's a much bigger blow effected on it than there was when it was rotating. That's the only loser I've had this afternoon. Not too bad. That also you could try for yourselves on a smaller gyro. No, I have not invented perpetual motion, of course not. So neither of the scores of people who have written to me saying that they did it before me. Leonardo da Vinci had a picture of a machine like this to dismiss it for all time, that it was impossible. But nobody listened. Leonardo knew all about this. This machine was a perpetual motion machine reinvented throughout centuries. That ball is supposed to roll down that slot and by increasing its torque and increased radius, it's supposed to bring the next ball in line, and so on, and so on. A perpetual motion machine, gyroscopes, spinning tops, perpetual motion. Any connection, do you think? Let's try this one. You can see why they cherish hopes, can't you? It takes a long time to settle down, but it would never work. Neither would this one. This is just another reenactment of the same sort of thing. You hope that when that flips over, like that, it'll give enough inertia to bring the next one over and so on. So once given a start, it should just go on. Not a very good invention. <laughs> 